was Duke just sending me off for my first solo in the Kid Fox. <laughs> Duke's been working with me for the last 15 hours or so. The first 15 hours were done by a great flight instructor. His name's Kevin Kellogg. And uh, he took care of most of my bad tendencies. I've been flying trikes for about 12 years now. Hundreds of hours. And when I decided to go with fixed wing aircraft, I had always wanted to fly the Kit Fox. They're uh, small tail dragger just always a plane that I always wanted to fly I've seen them flying around a lot all the different fly-ins that I've been to and I just can't believe that I'm doing this at this point <laughs> all the room in the cabin I'm used to being scrunched in another guy in there So I'm going to come over here and do a quick mag check. You can see the propellers slow down. Check both mags. She's good to go. Doing my pre-takeoff checklist. Checking the fuel. Flaps. You can see the red light of the radio turn on there. I'm calling myself onto the primary runway here at Boulder. We'll be taking off on 08. Line her up. Full power. Here we go. At this point, I'm just amazed at how fast it got off the ground. Watching my airspeed, angle of attack, flying the plane, getting some good altitude before I pull flaps back. pretty nervous at this point. Finally dawning on me that I'm actually up in the air by myself. Everything leading up to this point, there's been so much anticipation that I'm finally just realizing what's going on. And At this point, I can hear Kevin in the back of my head, you know, draw a consistent line across the, the horizon with the nose. Don't let it dip. Don't let it rise. So I'm being pretty gentle on the controls at this point. The pattern that we fly at Boulder is pretty tight. We like to stay on the on the south side of the road that you can see just coming into frame here on my on my strut camera. I realize that I've overturned because I'm just really hesitant to put too much bank into it at this point. Just still trying to feel the plane fly so much differently without that other 160 pounds, 170 pounds in the right seat. Noticing my airspeed at this point, it's you know doing about 80 
which is much faster than I usually was doing with the same throttle setting and climbing also. Looking for traffic. This is about the spot where other planes like to come in. So I'm always looking down Highway 30 here at the diagonal highway there to make sure nobody's coming in over the top of it to, to enter the, the pattern for a left downwind for eight. Here I'm pulling flaps, reducing throttle. I got him really fast. I've been just listening to AWAS, so I wanted to check the winds to make sure it wasn't switching on me. Flaps in, uh, about three quarter flaps, pull power, push the nose down, keep my airspeed up. I'm doing 70, trying to keep the ball in the middle. She's twitchy. Just trying to fly the same pattern. Clearing traffic for final over here. You see me look to the right. It's fairly typical that there's aircraft that are coming in on final here for runway 8 that have gone out much further. I found that turning right in the inside of that telephone pole there that I just went over, by the time I finish turning, lines me up perfect for runway 8. my airspeed up. I'm not going for a spot landing at this point. I'm just trying to put it down a little bit over the numbers, but plenty of airspeed. Just let her settle in. And just hold her off. Not too bad first solo landing. Push the flaps back down, get her clean, stick all the way back. I'm going to taxi up here to the midfield taxiway and turn off. I'm not too keen on doing touch and goes. I want to have all the runway possible. I don't think it's really hit me yet at this point. I'm just going through the motions. Just taxiing back. Just want to do it one more time. Here I've noticed that Duke's standing out on the tarmac. One of my other airplane buddies is over there with him. And Valerie is up on the deck of the FBO taking pictures. Sock's kind of off to the side. It's actually developed a little bit of a crosswind straight cross out of the south. three at this point. Checking all my gauges and I've noticed that my altimeter is skewed by about 50 feet since I took off and I'd set it before so something's changing in the atmosphere but I'm gonna go for it. I want to get three in. Pull flaps. Call it. Always watching for traffic on final.
this point it's really hit me that I'm actually up here by myself. I think the nerves are starting to hit at this point. I remember shaking. Getting pretty nervous. It wasn't that I didn't think I couldn't do it. It was just my brain was so focused on everything that I've been taught. Everything that I knew I needed to do. Falling back to my training, thinking about everything. My brain's going a mile a minute at this point. I feel a little bit more comfortable with her, so I'm gonna. I made a little bit more of a bank turn on left crosswind. I didn't want to overshoot J Road. out the right window there. I'm looking for other traffic coming out of the east that are going to come in on a straight approach for the downwind. It's not the best thing, but people do it all the time. I don't want to miss somebody just because they didn't listen for them on the radio. This time I'm pretty well lined up on Jay Road. It's a lot better, but I'm shaking pretty bad. <laughs> And I know that I've got it. I don't have any, any doubt that I can handle this. It's just, there's just so much going on, and I'm just anticipating every little thing. Traffic. Looking down at the runway, see if anybody's lined up. Pull power. Pull flaps. Get her slowed down. That downwind leg just happens so fast when I'm by myself. About a week before this, I got the, I had the chance to fly one of my buddies, uh, Mooney Mark 21 C model. It's a high performance retract gear aircraft that you know, cruises at 180 miles an hour. And he let me have the stick, and downwind in this thing, I was just thinking to myself, it felt a lot like that, just real fast. In fact, when I got my solo endorsement for this plane. Kid Fox. I actually got three endorsements. I got one for conventional aircraft because I have a light sport license and weight shift. Another one was for tailwheel. And then the third endorsement is for high performance because this airplane, full power, straight level flight, exceeds 100 miles an hour. Easy. So here I am coming back in on final for 08. bit hot at this point. I've got a lot of airspeed. I'm doing 65 when I should be doing 55. I'm pushing the nose over trying to get her down, but that just increases my airspeed. Now, if you watch this one, this is my worst landing out of all of them. Because I got so much airspeed, so much energy built up. I got her lined up, but then I, then I bubbled back up. There you can see it. if you notice, but I juiced the throttle right there at the last because I bubbled up and I kind of was floating it in, so I wanted to arrest the descent. That one kind of shook me a little bit, you know. I was already nervous, but then I wasn't able to just maintain my, my flare the way I like. I know everybody's watching me too, so... <laughs> Sock, no 
notice that it's a little bit stronger on this end of the railway. That's one thing about Boulder is that you can have wind doing completely opposite things on either end of the railway. You get some mechanical turbulence off of the hangars, especially when it's coming out of the south like it is today. I remember trying to taxi this plane for the very first time, coming from trikes where, weight shift trikes where the uh, the controls are absolutely opposite as far as steering and flying and everything is opposite. Now I drive this thing around and I just don't even think about it. You know, the nose is right on the center line and it's no big deal. It's where you want to be. That and so much more when you're ready to go solo. Take her up by yourself. So I'm doing my checks again. Set the flaps. Looking for traffic. This time I'm feeling a lot better about it. Starting to settle in, not be so nervous. Punch it. Wow, she just climbs great. thing about these kit foxes is that they have uh, what are called flapperons. They're full length flaps and ailerons. They do dual duty. So when you pull the flap handle, it reduces your aileron authority. But you have the added advantage of having full wing length aileron or, uh, flaps. And uh, it'll really slow this plane down really changes the angle of attack, your perspective over the nose and everything a tremendous amount. And it's a flying uh, aileron slash flap. It's actually got an airfoil shape to it, so there's a bit of a joke that these are really biplanes. But uh, what that really means is that it's really, really sensitive for roll. It's got a ton of authority. So at this point, I'm, st I'm still a little bit nervous, but I'm feeling a lot better. I'm rolling in a lot with a lot more authority you know, where I want it. Not being as hesitant. And that's what you want. You can't be hesitant. You have to put the plane where it needs to go. Just, it just hit me that I'm actually up here and I'm doing it. This is my third time and I'm just amazed at the airspeed. And this plane flies better than I ever hoped it could. Okay, checking for traffic, looking at the threshold, looking at airplanes coming in on a 45 to the downwind for 8, right over that interstate. Looking at the housing, the housing development coming up here is my reference for my base turn. Dropping the nose, pulling power.
increase a little bit of power here just so I can maintain my altitude. I like to turn final with plenty of, of altitude so I can glide right over the top of that lake. I don't want to put it in the drink. There's people out playing soccer today. This is my worst final turn. If you watch the ball right there, right on the middle of my dash, it's a little white arc with a black thing. It's swinging out to the side, and that is not what you want. That thing should be in the middle the entire time. So that was that was my worst turn out of the bunch. I'm feeling kind of bad after that one, but I am lined up. And this is my last landing of my solo in the Kid Fox. And that one was pretty good. I was able to hold it off. Now I'm just taxiing up getting off the runway. I don't want to loiter too much. Looking over at Duke. Yeah, looking for traffic, making sure nobody's on the taxiway. Let everybody know I'm off and clear, and now I just want to get it back so I can park it. They just recently resurfaced the taxiways and repainted the lines so everything's nice and bright. Especially when I'm taxiing over those those numbers on the taxiway. It's the uh, the Unicom frequency for the airport. So if you're in the air and you don't know what frequency it is, you just fly over and go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to tune into. So, there's Duke, there's my other buddy, and I'm just pulling into a parking spot here. There's Duke. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good at this point. I just soloed. Oh yeah.